just miles from Florida, Russian warships are still stationed off the coast of Cuba after completing a military exercise. So how concerned should we be about Russia working with U.S. adversaries so close to us? Executive Director at the Center for a Secure Free Society, Joseph Humeyer, joins us now. Joseph, always great to have you on. So what does this mean? I mean, I, I remember that just a couple weeks ago, we allowed Ukraine to launch weapons, in uh, U.S. weapons, into Russian territory. Putin said he was going to respond. Now we see these warships coming in to the Western Hemisphere, 90 miles off the coast of the U.S. Is this related? Is this the response he was talking about? Well, certainly, I think Vladimir Putin sending a strong message, uh, and the message is that they can uh, basically penetrate our neighborhood, the Western Hemisphere, mm -hmm. uh, in ways that I think uh, years ago would seem uh, impossible. Now, the White House is saying that this is normal, that they've done this before, which is partly true. They have sent naval vessels to the Caribbean before. They've sent them to Cuba before in 2019. Uh, however, they never sent it in a nuclear submarine. Uh, that's a first. <laughs> Uh, and, and here's the problem with the message of the White House. The White House message of nothing to see here, everything's normal, actually normalizes this activity. So what by normalizing this activity, you're basically saying, well, you can come back next month or the month after. And what Russia exactly wants to do, along with Iran and China, is normalize the deployment of naval exercises in the Caribbean. Uh, Russia, China, and Iran have already held six na joint naval exercises in the Gulf of Oman in the Indian Ocean since 2018, the idea is to bring that show into the Caribbean. And that's not a good thing. And that should not be normal. Why don't you explain what the consequences of that would be and also how the Latin American countries feel about this? Because I believe that warship is now going from Cuba to Venezuela, where we know the Iranians are also operating. So there's a, there's a, a joint operation there as well with, with China and, Venezuela, and, um, and Iran there as well. Yeah, so so in, in in many ways, what that normalization could do, it's sending a message to Latin America that your preferred partner of choice for maritime security is Russia, China, and Iran. That the United States is out of the game, the United States is weak, the United States doesn't have the ability to patrol its own waters, much less international waters. Uh, and so that's the message that Russia is trying to send with, with these warships. In fact, in Cuba, they're actually bringing Cubans on board to visit the warship. It's like almost like a, a show and tell. But the real purpose, I think, is really to go to Venezuela. And, and not, not many people are talking about that because that's the next destination. Uh, you know, the White House talks about how they're not going to have any nuclear transfers or any hypersonic missiles or not giving any armament to Cuba. Well, what about Venezuela? Because the, uh, while they're saying that publicly, very quietly, the State Department deployed the Under Secretary of State for Arms Control to Guyana. Why are you sending a person for arms control to Guyana? That's because you're worried about nuclear proliferation. Right. Uh, and that's, what I think, what we're doing. We're, we're basically setting the stage for a redux of the Cuban Missile Crisis from 1962. But this time, it'll probably be with more countries, not just Cuba. It could be with Venezuela. It could be with Nicaragua. And that's just a disaster for United States national security. Yeah, so much for the Monroe Doctrine. It seems dead. Uh, we can't even c control our own hemisphere. Um, I want to move to this. I, I wish we could have had more time. And by the way, we're going to um, we had a podcast, you and I, on this entire thing so people can get more information about that and go deeper and dive deeper into the consequences in the Western Hemisphere. But I want to get to this because there were eight um, ISIS members who were caught in U.S. territory. Um, they were arrested. And this is unbelievable. In addition to that, we know that um, the, Ven the Venezuelan gang, um, there's a brutal sex trafficking uh, operation going on inside of our borders um, that's affecting kids and, and women. Um, tell us more about that. Yeah, the, the, so I basically did an interview uh, with another media outlet, and we talked about the penetration of the U.S. southern border, everything from gangs to terrorists to sex traffickers to human traffickers to just the, the litany of criminal apparatus, and it goes well beyond the border. The focus of that article was actually to talk about how they are in very different states. These ISIS folks that the FBI tracked, they're as far ahead as in Maine, uh, the wow. northern part. Uh, of the country. So if you, you look at the map and you look at where ISIS is, where the triads are, where Hezbollah is, where the train de Aragua from Venezuela is, and not to say the Mexican cartels, which have one of the largest presence in the United States, they pretty much capture two thirds of the United States in terms of the, how they're penetrating our territory. And to, to kind of dovetail of what we were just talking about a second ago, what it really shows is a lack of deterrence on behalf of the United States. Everything from our southern border, physical border, land border, to our maritime borders in the Caribbean are completely being penetrated 
penetrated and the United States government, the Biden administration is doing nothing about it. It just makes no sense. If you love your country, why would you allow any of this to happen? By the way, I asked you um, on my podcast if the main concern, if you could rank China, Iran, Russia, what was rank them in which is the greatest threat to America here in the Western Hemisphere? You said you can't rank them anymore because they're working together. If you want more information on what uh, Joseph Umeyer, who's really um, one of the most expert voices um, and, and, uh, on this topic, um, make sure you check out the Kitchen Table podcast. We had a, went into a deep, deep dive on all of these, um, these dangers affecting us right here in our neighborhood, in the Caribbean, in our own country, um, and all over Latin America. So, Joseph, thank you for joining us. Always informative. Wish we had better news. Um, but uh, it's always great having you. Thank you. Thanks, Rachel. Always a pleasure. Of course. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.